Okay, so today is Mother's Day and it's been quite a journey. Um, I became a mother when I was 23 years old and now I'm 55, so it's uh, been quite a while. A very enjoyable time. I remember when uh, my first delivery, I had gone and my her father, my first baby's father was writing a poem because he was very feeling very anxious. He was sitting outside the delivery room and he, he wrote the most beautiful poem I can ever remember. Even though, I don't know, he felt that he, his poem was not nice, but I feel it was the most beautiful poem I ever written. Um, anyway, then out came the baby <laughs> and our lives changed forever. Even though I remember that whether anybody believes it or not, even when she was within me, then every time her father sent the letter, when I received the letter, whenever I read the letter, she used to move inside me. And I guess whenever now in the formless um, way, whenever I connect to my husband, I get, I guess she senses it and there's some movement in her. <laughs> some movement. There's a flutter in her heart because now, now she's adopted proud. I hope, I'm sure her father is very proud of her. She's adopted in psychology, positive psychology. You could even think. I could even think. <laughs> Naughty little Bundy would, could do so much of studies. I tortured her into <laughs> this rigorous like yes I did a PhD but for me it was very different I loved it I loved the experience because I did it with her when she was one year old I began my PhD with my in-laws and my parents and one year old baby and my husband living somewhere and I'm moving from one place to another and then the college and the library and I did most of my research in the library with my in-laws and then I did most of the writing part with my parents and oh it was quite a journey but then I enjoyed the journey I was very proud of it um, and then came three other babies <laughs> Where she was for a very long time alone and uh, five years. Yes, five and a half. Five and a half. And everybody was telling us that you, it's four years, she should have somebody, she should have someone. And then all that didn't work because her father wanted to give ultimate attention and money and resources and give her the complete, uh, I mean, the best life he could afford and the best education rather he could afford. But the universe had other plans and it was not only that, it was uh, she herself <laughs> was very angry and she did not like being alone at all. Then I was dying to mother someone else because everybody was mothering me. So I wanted to mother someone else with all my oh, yes. love and attention. And I was just I was like, stop it. I'm so grown up. And I was, when I was as far back as I can remember, uh, I always felt grown up. Uh, my because mother, I treated her. My like mother has always treated me with utmost respect, me. and you know she used to uh, let me handle gadgets uh, at the moment, and she used to and give babies. me responsibility. So I always used to feel that oh my god, I'm such a grown up. And uh, when her younger sister was born, she was so happy, and even when she was in the womb, she used to uh, she used to kiss her. She used to kiss my tummy and she used to say, bye baby, I'm going to play, I'll come back and I'll meet you. So she loved her so much and even uh, her younger sister loved her a lot. She used to do everything, imitate her and do everything that she did and she was like, they were inseparable, they loved each other a lot and... Uh, 
Oh yes, when she was a baby, everybody uh, was uh, uh, picking her up, and she was just five and a half years old, so nobody was letting her, allowing her to take the baby, and she was so indignant. She said, "She is my baby, and nobody is allowing and me." I felt it's because of me that she was born. I was so yes, entitled. Definitely, she and was born because of me. And she I was, was like, "Mere <laughs> liye she is born, and mujhe ko thani nahi de rahe," and I was so. Yes. And then I took a stand and I said that she will never let anything happen to her sister. She will give up her life, but she will not let anything happen to her baby sister. And uh, then she took her baby sister in her arms, and she never dropped her ever. <laughs> Though she used to hold her feet and swing her around like the helicopter and one. Once she got hurt, and uh, her sister was not crying. She was so surprised. <laughs> she was dumbfounded. I was crying she, because I knew yeah. that I had hurt her. I was yeah. crying. She was not. Crying. Yeah, and she was. And my husband was saying, "What is going on? If the person who's got hurt, she got a little cut over here, and she is not crying." And, and I was crying and, and losing she, my mind because it's I said, like, "Because yeah. of me, she got that hurt. My baby, her precious baby, got hurt, and then." And then Papa had to go because God called him, and uh, he had to leave his body. And then we managed the other three, the other two. And then later on, God gave us a new Papa. And then we had another little baby. And then we had uh, we were managing three babies. <clears throat> Though now that baby <laughs> looks the. He looks like the most grown up, but uh, yeah, he's the tallest, <laughs> strongest, I guess. But my son is the youngest, but he looks like the eldest. My life, I uh, of course I was a very hardworking mother, and I wanted all my children to be independent and hardworking. And this is one thing that I dedicate, and I'm very grateful to my mother because my mother. Uh, wanted me to learn cooking and she wanted me to learn everything all the work that uh, actually my grandmother did not allow my mother to cook because she was scared that she might burn herself and uh, <clears throat> and when she got married she had to go through a lot because she did not know cooking and um, so she taught me everything and i was i was very competent by the time i got married and Though I did not know a few dishes, but then basically I knew how to cook, and then my mother-in-law taught me the rest. And yeah. and when and when my children were there, then we had a way of a time. I mean, in a way, like we were fumbling through, our, tumbling, fumbling, and rolling through all the earth-shaking events of our life, the usual things like lack of money and sometimes there was money, sometimes there wasn't money. But one thing I was very clear, I wanted to, I wanted to make my life a very pleasurable, a memorable um, life. So uh, there were times when we were making smiley faces out of the rotis or parathas and I just wanted all of us to cook in a very enjoyable way. And now my daughter is married, and <laughs> I, I heard my other daughter who went and stayed with her. She said that uh, uh, she does the same thing. She, you know, tells everybody to cook together. So, uh, like her husband and she and her younger sister, they all cook together. And uh, so basically, she does the same things. But uh, and we went uh, even when we could not afford it, we went to a lot of rafting and. Uh, a lot of adventure trips and things I could not think I could afford, but then and God took me on a roller coaster <laughs> trip and it was beautiful. Now uh, I think of all those times we had when we enjoyed, <clears throat> even though that time I was so tense that oh my God I cannot afford it, but then. Uh, God came in the form of a stranger and He said, "No, you must." You must enjoy this with your daughters, and and I just somehow felt that it was God speaking through that stranger, so I just listened. And uh, I don't know since childhood, 
I have always considered God to be my friend. So unfortunately, I am a very, I'm supposed to be a very, um, well, I guess certain people could call me a very um, impractical mother because I kind of have that thing that God is telling me to do this, God is telling me to do that. Not always, but sometimes, most of the times, and I have been guided, I have been very blessed, I have been divinely guided, and uh, I think the only reason that I have survived not only motherhood but life and the fact that it is still so beautiful because I feel, I imagine, and not only, I, I don't only imagine, I feel a very strong, vibrant embrace of the Divine Mother and so much love, so much love. She nourishes with me with so much of love and she heals me and she gives me so much of energy that I... I mean, I've had many breakdowns and I have had physical, emotional, psychological breakdowns and I've been, I've been through uh, a lot of uh, kind of uh, stages in my life. But then that is one thing I always feel that she is holding me in her arms and, and that is how I visualize death because I feel that death is going to be just I will open my arms and I will just go into her arms and she'll just take me in her arms and I just know it and that is going to be, it's going to be a portal like uh, I'm just going to transform, I'm just going to leave my body and go into a higher place where a lot of love is there and that is how I feel and visualize and I've already felt it once because I just felt I was dying and I was I was open, I was, I was ready and I felt that ocean of love and her journey has been quite <laughs> an adventure with me, supporting me and we've been through, a, been through a lot of <clears throat> jobs and a lot of uh, changing houses, changing places until I made this beautiful house. This, this house where I feel my husband is spoiling me. I do just whatever I like and uh, this house is like magic. It's like <laughs> it's uh, yeah, like Harry Potter's world. It's my castle of magic. And there are many stories which I'll be in many episodes to build but over to her, she can tell you some of them. I think I'd like to I think I'd like to start with the fact that <clears throat> much of what I understand about my connection with the universe is through her life and her experiences and everything that I've observed while growing up, I was that horrible pestering child who wouldn't um, be told anything and um, who would always uh, yeah, ask pester. a lot of questions and experiment a lot. Yes, uh, experiment. I was a very experimental <laughs> child. Uh, <coughs> so I, much of what I have realized about myself and uh, much about what, what I've realized about whether we call it universe, God, spirit, um, the divine love is through her uh, and through her life experiences. And I started questioning them. And of course, it's As not, it's not been a smooth journey. Ever. It has not been a smooth journey, but then that's the fun of it. It never is smooth. If it was smooth, I wouldn't remember it. She it told is, me about how certain cases could uh, spiritual yes, people yes. were considered I mean, dis uh, disillusioned. And, and uh, there was uh, due to lack of enough uh, research. And I think that gap will always be there. Uh, because the, the gap between uh, people who are spiritually inclined and people who are considered um, isolates of society or whom the major uh, part of society cannot relate to, uh, my mother being one of them, and everything that I have observed um, in her life and through her life, uh, and of course my life as well, has opened me up to this world and I'm 
so much of what I am is because I'm thankful to her. Um, but we experience every morning in this house yes. and every evening. Morning, whenever we are ready, it's, it's always there. You know, that, that form of love, that form of eternal love. And I think that is the nature is the, I think this is something my mother, yeah. I've learned through my mother that nature is the ultimate mother. And she will always be. And yes. she is my, that is what yes. I look for. She's the father's money. She's as my role money. model for a nurturer, mm-hmm. that is nature. Nature is my role model for a mother. Yes. And uh, this one right here is um, one medium through which I receive much love. And there are many others, many others that I've also... Eternal patience, <laughs> like uh, nature has been polluted and polluted and polluted and polluted. And it's a cycle, you know. It's it's not that, it's not that uh, oh, we gosh. are... It's a beautiful way of constantly evolving. Um, yes. evolution that happens um, now coming back to me I started at a, a larger scale now coming back to me uh, the concept of being motherhood came to me very differently I always joke about this that I've always I, even though I'm uh, not a biological mother I feel that I've already uh, raised three because I uh, because my father, my youngest sibling was 12 years, is 12 years younger. Than my youngest sibling, my brother, is 12 years younger to me, and, and he looks 12 years older than no, no. no. <laughs> but uh, I have always, I have taken, I have stepped in and stepped out of the role of a parent for them, at least from my perspective. I parents switched between being a sibling and a yeah, attended many parent teacher meets and you know were running in the middle of the night for a, a notebook Coffee. which yeah which a notebook somebody forgot and in the in the middle of the morning made the science project we forgot it at home so I've, I've done all of that and I feel that you know life is giving me a bit of a break now now that they are one of my sisters is married um, one is away studying my brother is also grown up now so I am I am just. Um, for me, motherhood is a feeling and I, because I was so, while growing up, um, I have, I voluntarily slipped into, uh, sort of, voluntarily also circumstantially, I slipped into the role of a parent. I won't say a nurturer, a parent and a nurturer. All uh, single parents. Uh, sort yeah, elder the eldest sibling, sort of, yes. uh, you know, kind of steps up and has to step up also it is circumstantial and now as well. we are transitioning yeah. and now we are um, in the role where we are I, our, uh, I realize way. that she is codependent and her happiness is very strongly connected with mine though I have uh, recently been able to overcome that and uh, now I want that she should be happy doing whatever she is doing and with no connection to me but I think we are reaching towards it we do our own things we do our own creative things and she does she's leading her life I'm leading our, my life we have times when we are together but uh, I do realize that she's still very much connected to me and I uh, I feel that it is not healthy for her and I feel that she should be more independent and she should receive more she's still connected because we had a very close family and um, we still miss our being together. We miss the two little siblings and her younger sisters a lot. And because we were a very warm family, sort of a, a family of five members, but we were very close together and a dog. <laughs> so we were very close knit. But uh, <clears throat> now I want each one of them to uh, enjoy each moment, each second of self-discovery and this beautiful discovery, the connection with new people, new circumstances and nature and intuition and the fact that the universe at every second, I, I was just telling her that now don't ask me how you should do a certain thing, how you should cook or do anything. Uh, you should just follow your intuition because it is your higher self or its universe directing you and just satiate that moment. Whatever you feel like doing, it is such a beautiful, such a 
such a lovely feeling it gives so much of peace and joy and happiness and satisfaction just those little things just cooking the way we want to just decorating something the way we want to just doing those little things the way we want to so i feel that she should do the things she wants to always and with utter disregard to the whole world and she should be her own world and she should enjoy being her own she should enjoy her own um, company and she does she is getting there i know but she is still in she's still healing from the like we are still healing from the fact that uh, we are not together any longer the way we were this had to happen obviously everybody grows up and leaves and everybody has their own life and um, because she will not be able to go and uh, concentrate and focus on her sole purpose or her career which is always worried about me and because i know i feel very strongly and i know and she also has seen it that there is somebody always caring for me whether it is the formless uh father or whether but i believe that my husband has merged with uh, god and then i know i people might call me mad but i know how god is protecting me directing me at every step guiding me on what i should do and how i should take care of, of myself and even reprimanding me like a parent or oh, there you go <laughs> mother god is just the greatest mother i guess so uh, she worries for me in a way she's my mother because she takes care of me and she worries for me and she can't think of leaving me alone but then i don't i don't want her to feel that i'll be alone i want her to celebrate life feeling that her mother has the ultimate support at least she feels that she has the ultimate support and uh, she should not feel that we are weak in any sense and she should go ahead and she should not worry about me and she should live her life because when she was in the hostel we always used to have a lot of um, <laughs> uh times when there were urgent situations and i had to keep calling her back and um, we had quite a it was quite a roller coaster ride but then uh, now things are better and i feel that yes of course we'll be in touch but then uh, she should she should feel that i'll enjoy being alone and uh, not alone but yes in the <laughs> practical way alone uh, but with the spirit with me and with the universal spirit or the what do you call it collective consciousness being connected to the collective consciousness and there is everybody is there around me so but uh, i feel she does have a little bit of that that thing i feel that it is uh, not letting her grow to her utmost and that is one thing i'm worried about as a mother and i hope so my side of the story is completely opposite um i feel that i start uh, because that is what struck me and thanks to this video this is what i'm finding out uh, right now that she feels that i was codependent um codependence sort of sprouts and grows no i was very codependent in every family in i was very family with in most families i shouldn't of course there are exceptions but in most families it's with codependent. parents oh my um everybody in the family usually becomes codependent and we each of the members in the family in our own ways we grew out of it uh some um, very abruptly some slowly um i will only speak about her and i um so my side of the story is i started to as i started to um 
this is my PhD journey, which I think I cherish the most, not because of whatever happened theoretically or research-wise, but my PhD journey is the most special to me because that taught me, brought me closer and made me much more connected to myself and God and um, or the universe. And um, as I kept, and I, like I said, I, I always, and my students. I always question. <laughs> And my students also. You connected to my students also. Yeah. <laughs> Why is yeah. I, I connected. And many more but students. But majorly maybe. to myself. Majorly to myself. And as I connected yes. to myself. And I always kept questioning. And I will always keep questioning. Because questioning is good. Yes. Because as you question, you will get all your answers. Yes. Um, so that is the way to grow in life. Correct. Uh, so I kept asking questions. And slowly, not right then. But I kept getting my answers and as I kept getting my answers I also started to trust her I still remember the night when I mm-hmm. um, when I finally uh, got I was not right now but at a point of time at a certain point of time uh, I was extremely extremely concerned about um, worried about her and I wanted her to settle with a partner, you know, that was yeah. wrong on my behalf, that was wrong on my behalf right. to make that decision for her because I I had sort of in my head No, I would that love to have a partner but then, uh, you know, I think it's quite difficult uh, for someone. But that is your decision, it's not my decision. Yeah, I, I, I had decided that I would only universe. settle down after she finds a partner and she finds a supportive, yeah, yeah. Um, either a community problem. or a person yes, or a, yes, you know, yes, a, yes. or a, you know, a stable, yeah, yeah, sort of a support system basically. So that was, so, but then the, that I still remember tears rolled down my eyes the night I got the answer to, and the answer was just to surrender and I did. And this was about eight months back, eight to nine months back when I got the answer. And I then every time I used to feel worried about her, I refocused on myself and that helped a lot. And um, I think it helped me to uh, accept her transition and my transition together. I think that is very important. Which is a process, yeah. It is which is a process, then, yeah. which is mm-hmm. a process and um, it's still happening but I think um, one clear change uh, that I viewed in myself uh, from my from my side I just kept um, accepting as much as I could of course not not beyond the point because whatever I could from whatever her decisions were her changes were because she was finally and you know she was finally giving time to her choice trying to figure out what her choice is what she wants and that is something I from my side I always used to encourage her uh, let's say four to five four years back approximately four years back I wanted her to be happy in her definition of happy not because um, not my definition of happiness. What I, I want wanted to, to love herself. I wanted her to love yeah. herself, and it took its own time, and it is still taking time. Dedicated it's a, it's a to journey. Children, but yeah, because it was such a habit to care for her children others. before her, and before her children, her parents. So and ironically, um, that doesn't work because never you know, works. you know, when, yeah, whenever a mother cooks, she she now. If she has two kids, it's not sustainable. It's not healthy and sustainable. If there are four them. other members, then all those four members have different choices because, uh, so you know, you can't have one food item. Uh, you can't cook a dish which has four different tastes. It's not possible. So I mean, I think one of the uh, ideas is that you allow them to cook, let them cook, and when they want to, like instead of grumbling and because. You kill yourself trying to cook for them all the time and uh, seeing to it that there is always food on the plate, which is, I mean, I I think all mothers know how difficult that is. Um, and uh, I remember waking up 4 o'clock in the morning, cooking without eating myself and then uh, giving them tiffin cooking for the whole day and then just eating. I used to just eat one apple because... I didn't have time for myself and then uh, when I came back in the evening after work then I had heavy bags uh, every day 5 kilos 10 kilos you know uh, 
heavy bags with the things and so shopping and everything everything it it was so exhausting that at night when i finally was there uh, i had a time to have a meal then i didn't have the energy to have the meal and my hand could not pick up the spoon from the plate to my mouth i mean i didn't have that much energy so that was the kind of life i had in the afternoon and then these children won't eat because my focus was totally on them that what are they eating they are not eating and they are not eating they are not eating they are not eating and the focus was there and that is what used to get manifested you know they never ate so now and whenever i used to make something for myself then they all wanted to eat it <laughs> and then i changed then then i started making what i liked and and then this and then they enjoyed the food the food was so tasty that there was they felt that there was no food because the food i mean we kept cooking and it kept getting uh, egg, uh, kept finishing it because it was so tasty and this was i used to make uh, i always used to make food and it was always lying in the fridge because nobody was eating it because the food was made out of stress not out of joy it really matters and i think that yeah that is one thing which matters a lot so there was stress on me there was stress on the food <laughs> there was stress on the children to eat it and uh, and nobody enjoyed the food and then i started uh, making tasty food the way i wanted the way i liked and different um, different dishes on different days and Um, and then uh, everybody was always hungry then and i think this is one thing i always liked about her was that she never tried experiment it uh yeah she never tried to micromanage me or control me uh, of course there mm-hmm. were points of argument there were points of disagreements we we still like to do things differently that will always be there that is because that we say is, that we should that is that different. is because we are individuals right yes. that is different but um trying to or she yeah. never tried to um shelter me uh, and i loved that i know um, my siblings uh, say that um, that is not okay that parents should shelter but i love the fact that she didn't shelter me because i the kind of person that i am and i've always loved it i don't like to be sheltered i i because i know how resilient i am and i think it's like a cycle i i realize that i'm resilient because i've been through shit and um, and even my husband wanted uh, my children to grow strong and he didn't want them to be um, sheltered yeah sheltered and uh, protected and he wanted them to go through challenges and face challenges and overcome them and i am very proud all four of my children have faced challenges they have gone through the most trying and testing times i think every nowadays uh, and at the end of the day you cannot protect yes, anyone yes. you cannot and nowadays i think even the montessori children have to go through so much i mean it's such a journey just you know leaving the house and sitting in the bus and after 2 hours the bus reaches the school and the child it is, is almost finished it is something that we enjoy no matter how much we crib about it no matter how much we complain uh, each of us likes at some level if we are not completely overpowered by fear each of us likes to uh, movies <laughs> likes to we love our company walk. and uh, we like our company too. yeah i used to love doing everything with my children because uh, i almost felt my husband's presence when it was like magical for me when i used to do something with all of them together and i think most parents want uh, the family to be together like for uh, Uh, occasions like puja bhagera the i mean special occasions cultural occasions and festivities and uh, such things but then gradually i changed i transitioned and i i started and one of the getting... side effects of spending all that time together uh, was codependence i think uh, it's not something that uh, one has to identify and avoid it is something you go through in life 
and uh, it's just like every other challenge or experience you realize that you are there and then you you work on yourself that's all because never, i think we've spoken a lot so nothing ever will be perfect this happy mothers day to you little mother of little children i'm still learning and i am the big mother and she is the little mother and then we have the eternal mother guiding us both oh yeah my father used to always call her the little mother <laughs> Oh yeah, yes, see, yes. yeah. My grandfather had this thing about. Yes. Um, he is recently passed. A way he's transitioned. He's gone to the portal. He's still there with us. I see him everywhere, and I believe he's there everywhere. And he used to call her the Maharani, <laughs> the the Queen. Oh yeah, he spoiled me a lot because she was born in Jaipur and a lot of palaces and kings and kings and. And then he used to keep telling her, "This is your house." Whenever he used to cross a palace, and she actually thought that she started believing that it was her house. And yeah. he used to say, "I am the queen. This is my house." <laughs> Always a very sure child, you know. <laughs> yes, I'm so right. sure of myself. All the camel back, uh, the she she all the camel uh, rides that uh, yes, her grandfather spoiled her. And, and so yeah, that yes. was our. Uh, snippet of a never ending conversation uh, yes. but um, and this is the first of our yes, many this is the first of our many, many episodes many where more, we will be yeah discussing about life and uh, because i feel that whatever i have been through as a single mother and she's been through as the eldest uh, of four siblings i think there are most families go through it most single mothers go through it and i salute all single mothers not only the single mothers i salute all mothers and my salutations to all mothers because they they go through so much and their heart is still overflowing with love no matter what their children do that ocean of love is always there to hug their children and to forgive them and i think that is the most beautiful part of the matter and i would like to yeah. add that this sentiment holds true for people of any gender any sex any age because yes. motherhood and yes. the maternal feeling is more about yes the feeling and the attitude rather than if you are a male or a female if yes. you are very of whatever age you are uh, because i my feel like a mother now fortunately i can slip in and slip out of it uh, but there was a point of time where i was only a mother to everyone even people of my own age uh, that gets on me so quite maternal sometimes yeah it's just the nurturer feeling so everything she said copy paste on people of every everybody who has and each of us somewhere has that nurturing element in us no matter how how much i have friends of mine yes, and that whether you are physically or biologically a yes, mother or yes, not that you, hardly, you uh, can you can always be a mother because you know that the children we see everywhere if we care for them if we care for even a dog or a cat or anything we become their mother so it is you don't we are need always, to biologically be a mother you don't need we are to. always co-parenting with the universe always yes, we are yes. never alone so and yes. that's that's always going to be there so i wish all the people who consider themselves as mothers no matter what yeah, that's an important point thank you no matter uh, what age sex but if you have that uh, that feeling of a nurturer if you have the caring feeling you care for others you understand others you protect others you look after others Then a huge hug mother. to you yes. all yes all of you yes happy mother's day yes love you see you